okay, I've got something for you. Um, so I just recorded two hours of, ah, and then my pinker text can finish the beginning of that. Um, anyway, okay. So I just recorded, uh, two hours of, um, talk about the future of truth. Okay. Um, and that delivered some thoughts about recognition, about critical recognition. So that's what this video is about. Maybe it's on the heels of that one, um, on a drive. I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> so what is critical thinking? I had a good definition, I thought. Um, Suppose, but but now, I, but then I lost it. Let's suppose, though, I think this was it, something like this. Critical thinking is minimizing error in judgment. Okay? So critical thinking is when you're trying to judge something, what's best, the value of something, or what to do next, whatever. And if you're doing a good job of thinking critically, you are minimizing the number, the, the errors that you make in that. Of course, our today's definition of critical thinking is no good because it doesn't realize that we're brains. It doesn't, support, it doesn't assume that. So it's like critical thinking is just like, well, it would be having no errors, really. Or it would be being rational. It would be seeing things clearly or some bullshit. Um, um, one part of the today's definition might be something like using evidence or something, which would definitely be a part of my definition. But let's let's be more clear. So critical thinking, for me, it's broken down into three parts. There's a fourth, which is critical resolution. That's of the whole family of critical. But for critical thinking, it's three parts. One, critical recognition. Two, critical research. Three, critical reflection. Okay. We can call those recognition. Research, reflection, and then the fourth one, resolution. Okay. Simply put, this is how I would define it in the past, but today what I'm going to be doing is getting very concrete with what recognition is. But simply put, recognition is recognizing the nature of the mind. And that's it. Having uh, some cognitive self awareness knowing that you are a brain um and and that's the only way that you can have the right level of humility you can have some epistemic humility not tr not be have naive realism be trusting every all of your judgments and so on uh know about ballast fallacies and biases and so on all right research basically the scientific method that's critical research um Trying to obtain information by studying the reality around us. Um, but, you know, in a good way, trying to minimize error while you're doing that. Trying to collect as many data as you can. Trying to... Uh... So I got caught up on the fact that I finally used that in the plural. Uh, as uh, uh, And, uh, you know, um, try to control for variables so that your study of the world is somewhat reliable. Reflection, the third and final piece of critical thinking is you have some information. What do I do with that information? What does that information lead to? Trying to minimize error as you go from the premises to try to discover a conclusion or you're trying to evaluate someone else's moves from the information to a conclusion, being able to do that well, being good. Logician, you can't be 100% logical, but you can, um, you can, you know, try to get close. Okay, so recognition. Very specifically, what does it mean to have recognition to know about the judging apparatus, the thinking apparatus? In order to think critically, you got to know how the thinking apparatus already does it. You might think you got to know how to think. No, 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 no. That's after you've learned how it already thinks. Because if you don't already know how it functions, and you're just like, no, that's not gonna work. So how does the mind think? And then how can I, what kind of adjustments can I make so that it's more fruitful? Okay, so exactly what you would need to go research right now, if you wanted to have recognition, one, evolution. 
Origin of Species. You don't have to go read The Origin of Species, but I mean that not as the title. You have to, uh, where do we come from? What are we in the sense of like, how did we come to be what we are? Okay, so evolution. So this way, you're, you're already off to a good start now. You know that we're biological, you know that we're animals, you know that we're imperfect. You're off to a really good start. So then, brain biology. You don't have to learn about all the biology and stuff. Um, but, you know, you learn about evolution and then learn specifically how does the brain work? How do its components function to produce the things that come out of us? Okay? So you would have, you would have some understanding of feedback loops, some understanding of varying levels of excitation and inhibition. You'd have some understanding on a more macro scale of sort of some localization of certain abilities or certain, you know, blah, blah. Okay. And, and the most important thing that you're learning from brain biology is how distributed the mind is. How the mind can't be attributed to any sort of one piece. It is all of these pieces together. And that's not to mean there's some magical sum, some non-biological sum. No, no, it's just, no, they add, the sum is not bigger than the parts. Um, except in that it's a sum, I guess. Okay, so then I guess in some ways it is. But anyway, all right, so then you got some brain biology. So one, first, evolution. Two, brain biology. Three, some common mallets that we've identified, some common interpretive mechanisms that often are not good. Um, oh, by the way, another thing that you've learned in the brain biology is dominodal processing, how, how the mind works, how it goes, how just one thing leads to another, and then how there are these intersections of these streams and nuance gets lost in the, in the competition and cooperation of the neural networks. Um, then, uh, number three, some common mallets, some common biases and fallacies and so on. Uh, so you, you know, you got something and I made a list the other day. Um, so confabulation, framing, priming, affect heuristic, availability heuristic, uh, what cognitive ease means and how things like the fluency heuristic um, are ways we, we judge things, uh, decision fatigue, how desperately we try to resolve cognitive dissonance, um, and then um, experiments about introspection and how it's sort of a myth. Okay, so you learn a few of those mallets, okay? Or though that is a few. So you can learn those 12 or whatever, 11, okay. And then the final thing, now that you've gotten an understanding of evolution, an understanding of the basic brain function, and some examples of common cognitive errors, now you're ready to deconstruct certain basic illusions that all humans have. And once you've deconstructed those, you now have critical recognition. The illusion of free will, this idea that it's not dominoes, that instead there's some first cause force or entity. Um, the illusion of reason or complete reason or rationality that we know how to treat all incoming information, how to give it its weights and all of that. Uh, what's another thing in the Warsaw illusions? Um, that, that we are a single operator that there is one single entity that is in control doing things, which means that every action has the same sort of origin, which means that if, if I do this and then I do this, well, those two actions are both based on the same set of knowledge, the same set of values, the same blah, 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 blah. And that's bullshit. Uh, the single observer myth that... That, yeah, that, that there's just one sort of observer that's observing the world and that's maybe even observing its own lower processes. Um, that's bullshit. Uh, information coming here this way, be observed, you know, affected. 
uh, this stream be affected by that information while this information is coming in here affecting the other stream. Well, I guess it would be like that. But that's just in the case of the visual field or it can be, you know, whatever. The amygdala and the hippocampus are both laying down their own memory tracks, right? So that's another example of how it's not a single observer. Okay. Um, uh, I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, naive realism. That's another illusion in the Warsaw illusions. And there you go. Good. 10 minutes isn't bad. Okay, good. So if you learn about evolution, some basics of brain biology, just like basically how something gets from here to here, um, some common mistakes, and then, or some common interpretive mistakes, I guess, and then some, some common mistaken beliefs that we're all sort of pre-programmed with. Uh, or it's just by nature the fact that yeah. Anyway, we're not going to get into why we see ourselves as a single self. That's all. All right. Thanks. Bye.